commoning is the processes of social production and social reproduction. Um, it's kind of this, there's this distinction that is, I think, pretty synthetic, but um, let's say social reproduction, um, that are, first of all, independent to some degree, maybe not absolutely, but to some degree, uh, from the mediation of the market and the state. So these are kind of more autonomous, let's say, fields um, of, of meeting social needs, autonomous ways of meeting social needs. Um, so that's kind of the first, I would say, the criteria or like the, the axis of the definition. Second, they are collectively produced and collectively shared. So it's, some, it's not like us individually. It's different than the private sector or the private sphere. Uh, where we each are producers or laborers individually and then we go to the market and we demand and consume things individually. Rather than that, we produce together um, based on different principles such as solidarity and, and equity and um, let's say democracy um, rather than self-interest and profit and accumulation. So it's kind of a different sphere in terms of that too. Um, and shared equally. So um, it's kind of a different principle in, the, in terms of that too. It's not based on uh, purchasing power. It's not based on competition, as I said. So for instance, um, a community garden can be a form of commoning to the extent that it provides um, a shared wealth. It provides that it's not exclusive to certain people that everyone who needs um, and who wants can access the kind of means of social reproduction, which is kind of the land and the relationships and the networks and the seeds and the plants in that, in that uh, community, um, to the extent that they are providing labor to produce that, kind of that social wealth. And that the, kind of the, the fruits of that social wealth or that uh, community, let's say garden, is shared equally or shared by everyone who have kind of taken part in their production. So why this is a, this is a process of commoning? Because it provides maybe not everyone who works on that community garden will be able to meet their food needs from that community garden, but it provides a form of social reproduction, a form of nurturing ourselves, um, that is not mediated by the market. So it doesn't base, it's not based on how much money you have being a part of that community garden. It is not based on uh, how much wage you have, or it's not really, it's not predicated on you, become, you being a wage laborer. Because one thing that the market does is that um, we can only access certain goods and services as long as we have cash income. And in order, so they are commodities, so they're bought and sold. And in order to meet our needs by commodities, we need to have income. And that means that we need to work. So the need to have money to meet our needs actually make us wage laborers. Or that's one of the reasons why we are working for someone else trying to make income. So if we break that link, if we can provide forms of meeting needs, providing for ourselves that are not dependent on uh, having cash income, that are not dependent on commodities in that sense, then we are indirectly actually empowering ourselves against our employers. So coming back to the community garden, if we can provide at least some part um, of the food needs of ourselves, through these non-commodified forms of producing food, such as a community garden, then we have at least a degree of independence from the market and the state. So we're not really dependent on state, uh, let's say welfare systems for our food too. So we are in part empowered in our struggles against the state too, because now we don't really have as much to lose because we have our own autonomous food system. From the example of this community garden, producing um, or a way of social reproduction that is autonomous from the market and the state, that is that where the labor is done collectively, where um, where the 
kind of social wealth that's produced is accessed collectively and equally by all, and where the decisions are made democratically. And so, I mean, a community garden can be very exclusive, very, um, or exclusionary, where the decisions are not made by, I mean, by democratic rules, where, um, I don't know, people are admitted based on their class or, or race or ethnicity or gender, I wouldn't call that commoning at all. So in that sense, I think commoning is not only defined by the fact that it's producing a shared form of wealth that is outside of market, a shared form of land or a shared kind of space, uh, but more importantly by the kind of relationships and by the kind of principles that it's built on. And um, so two very influential thinkers that I've, I've been kind of uh, following on commons and commoning are Silvia Federici and George Papensis. And they say in one of their, um, in one of their texts that the idea of commons or the commoning is not only, is not kind of, it's not the ends of the struggle, they say. They are the means of the struggle, precisely because of the, like how I kind of, I tried to explain it a minute ago, they, they actually provide autonomous forms of social wealth um, that kind of relieves the dependence of the political subjects that we are all on the state or on the market or on capital, on our employers. They have the potential to, to really energize and strengthen struggles, social struggles against both capital and the state. So in order to actually, so they make us more independent from um, these structures of power that we are struggling against. If you are a worker that is absolutely dependent on, uh, on their wage, on your wage, uh, there's a limit to which that you can risk when you are uh, struggling against your employer. So that's kind of, if we can at least provide some autonomous and collectively managed forms of providing for our needs for all, then we'll definitely have a much higher hand in our struggles against capital.